Please welcome, without further ado, the University of Colorado's Bay 6 development team to present North Yard Landing. The team members include Lauren Costantini, Ethan uh, Argov, David Armisty, Ryan Patterson, Ben Rothstein, and Edie Schirmerhorn. Please come to the stage. It's uh, pronounced Eddie, but thanks. <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here. My name is Lauren Costantini, and we're Bay 6 Development. Tonight, we're excited to share with you our vision for a reimagined industrial campus. 5151 Bannock Street is an opportunity to redevelop one of Denver's largest industrial zone properties into the city's first and only campus-style ecosystem that brings together office and industrial users across Colorado's outdoor recreation economy. So who is Colorado's outdoor recreation economy? Well, it's full of the makers that create the products that allow us to celebrate all that Colorado has to offer. It's an epicenter for employment that thrives on innovation and attracts some of the state's top talent. It's full of homegrown companies and others that just touch down in the Mile High City. It's an economic powerhouse that accounts for nearly 10% of the state's GDP. And it's a community of doers that take action and understand people, profits, planet. Colorado's outdoor recreation economy is thriving. It's what makes Colorado special and it's an industry that's at the heart of North Yard Landing. North Yard Landing will be comprised of over 500,000 square feet of ground up development and 324,000 square feet of adaptive reuse with a total capitalization of $188 million. The equity requirement for all projects in the master plan is $65 million. The project level IRR and equity multiple is 19.6% and 2.4x over a 10-year investment horizon. And now I'm gonna pass it off to Ben, who's going to discuss the market factors that position us for success. Lauren, thank you so much. So our site is located in Globeville. Industrial uses in this north central submarket have historically performed very well, primarily due to the area's access to north-south and east-west corridors. There's also a lot of development and investment happening around our site all of which is gonna help Globeville evolve into a real place to be within Denver's growing economy. When you dive into Globeville's master plan, they call for the area to remain as an industrial edge, meaning that now, more than ever, North Yard Landing needs to be, and really wants to be, a job-creating industrial campus. So here's some high-level data points I want you to hold on to. We're seeing decrease in vacancy and increase in demand for industrial product all across the Denver market. Denver businesses are growing. Let's dive in. This chart shows, compares, demolitions with, compares demolitions and deliveries of industrial products within a two mile radius of Denver's urban core over the last 10 years. A lot of blue going down, not a lot of orange coming up. And right now you're probably thinking, wow, what an accurate yet completely one-sided way to cherry pick your data. And you're right. So sure, Denver's core has seen a lot of demolitions, but secondary markets have seen significant deliveries. These deliveries come mainly in the form of large-scale industrial warehousing, aimed and targeted at one of the most talked about markets since the dawn of Amazon Prime, last mile delivery. And, <laughs> sorry. So, moving forwards, at the same time, outdoor industry is growing within Colorado. These companies come in all different shapes and sizes, and North Yard Landing will is going to deliver an integrated product mix that targets both the market demand as well as the dynamic demand inherent within this niche market. So we have some warehouse product coming online. 
But deliveries of warehouse products in the area over the last 12 months have been almost 780,000 square feet. Only 120,000 of that has been industrial flex product. Absorption in that market is almost 360,000 square feet. So North Yard Landing is bringing on a fair amount of flex space to function as maker and creative spaces targeted at tenants demanding 10,000 square feet or less. And as this outdoor economy grows within our, within a, our campus, companies tangential to the outdoor industry, such as design, consulting, media companies, are gonna be prime tenants for our phase three office products. So companies of all shapes and sizes will find exactly what they're looking for under one of our roofs, less than five miles from downtown Denver at North Yard Landing. I'm gonna pass it off to Ethan Argov, who will dive into some more of the details. Thank you, Ben Rothstein, I really appreciate it. So, organizational structure, wow. That is confusing. Let me break it down for you in a nutshell. The current landowner of 5151 Bannock Street has agreed to contribute the property as equity to our project in a limited partner position. In addition, we have agreed to give the land investors 25% of the GP promote across all of our vertical projects. We feel this structure provides alignment of interest between buyers and sellers, as well as general risk mitigation for new LP capital dollars coming in across the site. So moving over to the horizontal, the horizontal cost for our projects is expected to be about $12 million um, or about $300,000 an acre. Now, the land company that we form is actually going to go out and establish a metropolitan district to help recoup some of the horizontal infrastructure costs incurred by our project. And net bond proceeds from the metro district are expected to be about $8.2 million. So let's transition to the verticals now. The master plan for North Yard Landing includes the design, construction, and adaptive reuse of over 830,000 square feet of industrial flex, industrial warehouse, professional office, self-storage, and a small food and beverage component. And our phasing strategy really includes three primary physical phases. Inside of each phase, we have separately owned and capitalized vertical components. We're gonna start with our phase one, which includes our uh, warehouse and the entirety of Campus North. We're then gonna move to our phase two and the campus core and finally finish with phase three in Campus South. So coming back up to phase one, we are really excited about this product in particular. We have been able to manufacture significant yield in the industrial space through the creative and strategic design of our industrial condo product. At an average unit size of about 2,200 square feet, we are able to deliver brand new space to small businesses at an average price of about $530,000. Now, from our perspective as a developer, we're exiting this stuff at about 245 bucks a foot. On our cost, that's a 28% unlevered profit margin. That's pretty impressive yield. Remember, this is tilt-up construction. So let me ask you a question. Why would a business want to buy an industrial condo? I will tell you. Um, before tax, the annual ownership obligation of one of our for sale units is roughly equivalent to what it would cost to lease a comparable unit. However, taking into account depreciation, interest, and real estate taxes, among other things, from an after-tax standpoint, owning one of our units is about 68% of the cost to lease. So, if a business can sacrifice a little bit of liquidity and a little bit of mobility, buying a unit is actually a great option. Now, for businesses that prefer the flexibility of a lease structure, we are also providing about 25,000 square feet of ground-up industrial flex similarly designed to our condo product. On the northern portion of our site, we have our 70,000 square foot self-storage facility that will serve tenants on our site as well as the surrounding metro area. So for all the extra stuff that you have in your apartment, all your outdoor gear that you have no place to store, you can come up here and drop it off. Um, and our industrial warehouse located in Campus South uh, is 135,000 square feet and it features a standalone entry point off of Bannock Street for easy semi-truck access, turnaround, as well as trailer parking to the rear, as you can see on the site plan. The building itself features 32-foot clear heights, 50-foot column spacing, 135-foot truck courts, um, and provides optimal efficiency for modern-day logistics operations. And with all that being said, I'm gonna pass it off to my buddy Ryan here, who's gonna talk about the adaptive reuse we have in phase one. Thank you, Ethan. So before I dive into adaptive reuse, I'm gonna share a bit of history with you. In 1922, the Burlington Northern Railroad Company built the Denver Locomotive Shops. This was one of the largest railroad projects in the 1920s, and it played a significant role in Denver's economic history and development. 
A hundred years later, these buildings play a central role in our vision to revitalize the site and drive economic activity to Globeville. The first time we toured the site and walked through these historic buildings, we were captivated by their design and their architecture. We knew right away that we were going to preserve these historic buildings. However, the construction of additional warehouses over several decades has blurred the distinction of these historic buildings, has crowded the site, and has diminished a sense of place. Our site plan addresses these issues. Our, our plan restores the historic buildings, enhances site circulation, adds green spaces and community plazas, and creates an integrated campus. These are things to which any user on our campus would be attracted to. So, in phase one, we will bring to market nearly 75,000 square feet of adaptive reuse across three of the five historic buildings. These three buildings will be wrapped up under one capitalized structure to complete the assembly of industrial flex space in phase one of our development program. This includes the blacksmith shop, which has been recently renovated and ready for occupancy, the powerhouse, and the boiler shop, which will undergo renovation in 2020. We've received interest from several potential outdoor industry companies, such as Ski Rides and Guides, Ski Lift Design, and Escape Van Colorado. And finally, the massive 500,000 gallon steel water tank will become a decorated canvas for local artists to demonstrate local talent. And the 270 foot smokestack will become a beacon for North Yard Landing visible to, visible to anybody and everyone passing by. And with that, I'll introduce David who will discuss phase two of our development program. Thank you, Ryan. So phase two, this is all about the build out and delivery of our campus core, and it all starts here at the gantry. Originally constructed in 1922 as a locomotive machine and erecting shop, this is now gonna be the heart of North Yard Landing. Featuring 138,000 square feet of adaptive reuse, we're gonna be building in a second level mezzanine for a total delivery of around 238,000 square feet of space for our creative office and maker and showroom users. This is gonna feature an open layout that encourages interaction and communication among tenants. And it's gonna be a space that fosters collaboration among Colorado's outdoor community, because that's what we're trying to do here. We're building a community and an ecosystem among Colorado's outdoor industry businesses and leaders. And that's what makes me all the more excited to introduce this next piece. We are thrilled to announce that we have a fully executed LOI from Snowbond. Now this is a local Colorado-based company that brings one of the state's greatest sports down into the Denver metro area. It's gonna be a build to suit facility and it's gonna give you guys the opportunity to ski and snowboard year round indoors. And it also has a little bit of an R&D component to it because our manufacturing tenants on site can actually come down to here and test their products. This is something that we feel just has a tremendous amount of synergy with the outdoor industry tenants that we're trying to attract as well as with site activation overall. And that's a great segue into this next piece. Connecting these two spaces is gonna be our rail yard community park. Now this is the place that you can come down on the weekend with your family. You can grab a bite to eat at a farmer's market or a food truck rally or watch a movie in the park. This is all about building a sense of place and creating an energy. And we're doing that here at North Yard Landing. So with that, I'd like to hand it off to Eddie. He's gonna walk you through our final phase as well as what I know you've all been waiting for, our financial returns. Thank you, David. So, in phase three, once our vision for creating an outdoor industry campus really starts to take shape, we think the site will be ready for a 120,000 square foot office building. This office building is gonna serve users such as VF Corp, who wanna be part of our outdoor ecosystem, or users who have some sort of connection and relationship with the already existing industrial tenants that we're bringing to the campus. Some of my personal favorite things about this office building is that it's gonna have unimpeded views of the mountains, its own private park, structured parking, and of course, really easy access off of I-70 for commuters. Also in phase three is gonna be our last adaptive reuse project. We're going to repurpose the nearly 12,000 square foot storehouse into a food and beverage component that's gonna serve the 2,200 jobs that we're bringing to this site. So with these two projects, the office and this food and beverage, 
that will wrap up phase three and we think really tie together our vision of creating both an outdoor community and a large center for employment. Now, finally, on to the good stuff, the returns. So starting at the top line, I show the project level return right below a 20% IRR. At the investor level return, after our 70-30 split over an 8% IRR, our cash equity investors will receive right around 17%. For the land equity investors, I want you to focus on the $52 million profit number. The land equity investors over the, our phases of development will receive that $52 million in addition to the $50 million that we're paying them for the cost of the land. So in total, they're gonna get paid $50 million and then receive the $52 million in profit on top of that. I think that's a pretty good return and really aligns the land investors with us. Finally, we are also giving the land investors, as Ethan mentioned, they're coming in as LP capital, but we're giving them 25% of the GP promote. At the bottom, you see the $13 million number. That's our promote, the GP promote, after subtracting their share of the 25%. So with that, I'm gonna hand it off to Lauren, who's gonna conclude our project. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. We hope you now share in our vision to leverage the character of Colorado to carry Globeville's industrial past into a modern and sustainable future. So the next time you go for that hike or sleep under the stars, think about the people and products that contributed to making your experience something special. They'll all soon be here in Colorado at North Yard Landing. Thank you for your time and go Buffs. Woo!